Oh, my video did that again. Hey, if you got this part of the video, you've got the live on it edition. Home Gadget Geeks, Thursday night, the 1st of October. We we made it through September. <laughs> it's a good, the, the year that just keeps giving. I, I saw on Facebook, Mike, somebody was like, October, you sit down, you be quiet, you don't touch <laughs> anything. Like <laughs> every other month has been very bad. You be the good month. Oh my gosh. Uh, we'll if you're, see. if you're joining us live in the chat room or if you're joining us live on the live page, the average guy.tv slash live, uh, jump in the chat room. It's actually right below the video window. Now you can do it that way. Or there's a link that'll take you to the YouTube page and they're both there. You can do it any way you want. Ken, Joe, Brian, uh, John, Mark, welcome. Good to see you guys out there. We hopefully you guys are starting to get and think about getting prepped for the meetup, the the October. Now that we're in October, the M E A T meetup. Yeah, for the twenty fourth. I'm getting I'm getting psyched. I've picked Mike. I've picked what I'm gonna grill. So I'm gonna talk about that here. Oh, good. I have not picked yet. Yeah. I need to I need to think about that. Yeah, I do have my setup though ready to to put out to look at the grill. I'm actually. Oh. I think I'm gonna do two things. So we'll talk about it. Talk nice. about it in the show. Yeah. Something something that will keep me going. I got a typo in Chris's name. Hmm. Where, Justin? On the Eventbrite thing? Yeah, Chris isn't here anyways. So it's just us tonight. Chris Chris couldn't make it. So not to let's see. Where would I where would I where would Chris's name be, Mike? It is on the site somewhere or I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. Justin, you'll have to in the in the Chris in the hmm. Not sure. I don't either. Justin, let us know. Justin, let us know. If you're uh joining us for the very first time or catching us on YouTube for the first time, uh we're a little bit of pre-show and uh hang tight. We'll get started here in about four minutes, Mike. I am uh, we got we got oranges, and so I've gone kind of back to Blue Moon, and I forgot how good it is. It's your with staple, an yeah, with an orange. Yeah. Like I drink these often without it, but yeah, this is my staple for sure. These and Day Blazers have become that's true of summer staple. Yeah, yeah. YouTube description. I went with just the generic Bud Light tonight, so nothing, nothing oh. crazy over here. Yeah, maybe I did put the that in YouTube description. beer flavored okay. water. I put Christ Nessie. Well, we'll leave him. We'll leave him as Christ. He is, he is the Messiah, Almighty we'll, Christ Nessie. We'll let him. He he had a conflict tonight, so we we are alone. Going to be talking. Uh, well, we've got some stuff that we're going to be talking to you about. So hang tight. We're coming up on that. Appreciate you guys finding that. And I think, gosh, I remember. I thought I fixed that. Maybe I, maybe I put it in twice. I've been trying to get in better in the better habit of setting up the live show on, through StreamYard into Eventbrite um, to um, so that uh, for those folks that subscribe to the live channel, they'll, it'll show up in their dashboard a couple times during the week and they can set a reminder there and some of those other kinds of things. So, and that's always so funny to me because I cannot get our channel to alert me on YouTube. Huh? It's it's the weirdest thing. When it goes live, like, I just yeah. got the notification. It was funny. Did you? Just, I just got it. It just popped. Yeah, in. mine. I don't know what. I don't know why it doesn't alert me. I have the bell icon. I have all that stuff and nothing. Hmm. Um, it's a weird. It is weird. I need hmm. to get chat to start to be responsible for every fifteen minutes. Type focus in all caps. So I remember to focus my camera. <laughs> Tonight's gonna be the first week that my camera doesn't turn off on me. Because we're actually going to remember, I, I just focused right now. So nice. every 15 minutes, chat, nice. focus. So I remember to put that so we don't end up with I'm a black get a glass of water or something. I can tell I've, been, I've drank way too much beer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get hold that on. dry mouth a little bit. Uh, I do. Yeah. No, hold on. I'm going to go grab. Uh, I'm gonna All right. Go sounds good. You're right. Hold on. Chat, we've got a. Uh, got ham radio upgrades to talk about tonight too that'll be fun not a lot just a little you guys called it it was uh how many weeks until my antenna needed an upgrade i think i went through two since the last time we talked though so you guys definitely called it we had a whole bunch of waters down here and they're gone it's not good it's <laughs> okay 
It's all right. Well, Those it's dang it's, kids stealing your waters. Well, now I gotta like I just got Sammy drinking beer this summer. Like she was not a beer drinker at all. Right. And you know, you know your kids not drinking in college when you offer them beer and they're <laughs> like, nah. Yeah. Right. Right. So pretty, you know, pretty confident. Like that's one of those tests. Right. And she, she had no reason not to do it. So, so we worked on it this summer I'd offer, you know, from time to time. And then eventually Bud Light Orange was the, uh, was the gateway in there. Uh, and then the lemonade, we bought the three packs. So the lime, orange and lemonade pack. I haven't tried their lemonade. Is it good? Yeah. It's really good. Okay. Yeah. That's what I should have grabbed. That's basically water. So, um, but they're, they're, they're pretty delicious. And, um, so she's, she got into that and then, and then has been trying others. So good for her. She's kind of branching out a little bit. We got her, yeah. got her drinking wine early in the, in the, in the spring with us just to kind of show it. The problem is she drinks with us and we drink some pretty good stuff. So she's been ruined. <laughs> she's spoiled on that except, front. Except the Bud Light, except the Bud Light. Yeah, we got some. We I got some actual oranges, so I, I cut one up and mm. dro- oh yeah, dropped it in last night. I was like, why have I been drinking this without oranges? That's just a, it's the best part. It's just a bad thing. Okay, eight o'clock in the central time zone. Oh yeah, it is. Man, let's get this bad. thing. Let's get this thing pulled together. Hopefully, if you're out there listening live and you haven't joined us, I see Alex, Justin, Joe, Ryan. Ken, Mark, Brian, uh, Joe, guys, welcome. Thanks for jumping in the chat room. I feel a little quiet. And uh, thanks for coming out tonight. We have a lot of nothing. We're going to hang out and have a good time. So yep. make sure you are. <laughs> are we admitting that now up front? <laughs> Might as well. We'll just see. We'll, we'll say it up front and then just see how well we do. Because we've done this before. We've had a lot of nothing before in Actually, I think those are some of the, be- the some of the better shows. Mm-hmm. You know what? I forgot to turn on my monitors. All right, let's get those. I forgot. I'm. I man. Oh, the surface completely shut off. Wow. Hasn't turned back on. Like yep. Dead, uh, dead no, on it's it's oh, it's, it's powering up. It's rebooting it. right now. Got it. Got it. Um, uh, Brian makes a good point. If you guys click the like button in advance, that'd be awesome. Just go ahead. I mean, you're gonna like it. So. Just do that. I appreciate it to the 128 subscribers we have on this channel. I got, we have 1400 now on the other one. So that's pretty good. Okay. Let's see if I can make it through this thing. This is 62. I'm terribly unfocused tonight, Mike. I am terribly. I'll bring us back. I'll okay, try. God, that'll be the first time. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's a good thing I didn't drink beforehand. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm going to need your. I'm gonna need, need my of, focus. I am not, not my it. squirrel mentality. No, super good. All right, let me see if I can do this. This is the Average Guy Network, and you have found Home Gadget Geek show number 462, recorded on October 1st, 2020. Here on Home Gadget Geeks, we cover all the favorite tech gadgets that find their way into your home. News reviews, product updates, and conversation, all for the average tech guy. I'm your host, Jim Collison, broadcasting live from the Average Guy.tv studios. And Mike, this is like, I, I just, every fall, I'm just reminded how much I like fall in the Midwest. It's pretty Fall in Nebraska right? is amazing. Like the temperatures are perfect. These are the days where I like to go outside and work from home if I can. If I, if I can get away from the meetings and have just some time where I need to crank out yeah. some work, I like to go yeah. sit out on that back patio. Working from home is not bad when you can grab the laptop. It's really and sit not. I sit out. Um, last night, Tim, Tim is home, my Marine son, and, and, uh, we went out and uh, enjoyed some beverages and a, and a cigar. And it was that perfect temperature where it was cool enough and, and windy enough that we just had to turn the deck heater on a little bit, right? It's that kind of, mm-hmm. it was just that perfect temperature out there. No bugs. The crickets are kind of calming down. Cicadas are gone for the most part. I think we have a frost warning for tonight or tomorrow night, one of the two coming in. And so it's just, it's just the perfect time of year. I just love fall here in the U.S. Leaves are all crackly and crunchy. We could use a little bit of rain, but uh, but maybe not. But with that, we'll post some show notes, and they'll be pretty good this week. By the way, if you haven't been out to check out the show notes in a while, I've been putting a table of contents in the show notes now. So if you want to know where a subject starts, boom, in the show notes. If you want to know how to get to the meetup, we're going to talk about that here in just a second, boom, in the show notes. So 
head out to the average guy.tv slash HGG four, six, two is kind of the easiest way to get there. Or just go to the average guy.tv. It'll be the, if you're listening to this, anything in the last four weeks, it's going to be right on the front page. So check out those show notes. I'm spending a little more time getting that table of contents. That'll take you right to it. So if you want to know, you know, meet up, boom. If you want to know when we started talking about ham radio, boom, they'll all be in there. The average guy.tv slash HGG four, six, two. Big thanks to the October sponsor, Canva. You ever heard of them, Mike? Canva.com. Are you familiar with our friends over at Canva and what they do? Yeah, I, I've heard of them, but I need you to I need I need to learn more about them because yes. I haven't personally used them, but I, I've heard they're really good for creating images. Is that right? Yeah, it's it's exactly right. So like the album art that you see, if you go to the average guy.tv here, I'll show you really quick. If you head out to the average guy.tv and go to their front page, no, nah, not the dashboard, Jim. You want to go to the front page. Let's see if we can get there anytime. So as you look at this, of course, this is pretty standard graphics. The Home Gadget Geeks out, although I built this on Canva, that that graphic there. But from time to time we post, you know, I, I get some other contributions from from outside sources and I make graphics for them. And uh, and that's how I make them. I make them on Canva. You can do you can import all in your own images. Uh, you can you know, if you go in here, I can say create a design. Give me a custom dimension. In this case, I always make my album art 600 by 600. It's just something that works well for me, right? Brings up a screen. I can, this is, if you're watching, if you're doing or listening on audio, this might be a good time to head over to video. I can come in. I've got a place to, they have stock photos. Some of them are free. Some are paid. They do have a paid plan over there at Canva. They also have the ability to upload uh, images that I want. So if, we're doing a custom, you know, we're doing an event at Gallup uh, this week called the Theme Thursday 2020 Challenge. And so I just grabbed some of those graphics and you can just bring them over. If I wanted to do some things with them, I could bring them in, extend them out, make them, you know, pretty easy, make them bigger. It's kind of graphic design for the graphic design challenged, right? Because right. you saw how easy that was, right? I could bring those things in. I can resize them if I want to. And all in the web browser too, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, you're it's, not, nothing you need to download. This is all done in the web browser. Yeah, completely browser-based. Maybe I, like I want to add some check marks to these. Like, right? So I'm going to I'm gonna put check and, uh, and search for that. It's going to find some check marks for me. And then I can grab that check mark. Now, in this case, it's, it's black and I want it white. Right. So I'm going to flip that over and now it's white. Now I'm going to grab that and bring it over. Ooh, it's too big. <laughs> so let, let me just size that thing down. Boom. I just, I made that image today. I think that's exact one that I shared on social media. You see how fast that was to kind of create that image. Yeah. So you can too. Canva has been around a while and they're sponsoring us for the month of, and they're the affiliate, uh, the, the sponsored affiliate for the, the month of October. Go to the average guy.tv slash Canva, C A N V A. If you sign up for an account there, uh, we get a little credit for that uh, here as well. But just kind of a great way to do graphics and images and has been, go ahead. Well, no, I was just going to ask a question. So I saw on the homepage there, it looks like they have some templates for like, that are sized, if you don't know the size dimensions, it looks like they have like social media. So like, oh, YouTube channel art. That's the yeah. one I saw. So no. it seems like it would be the perfect dimension. You're just filling it in. That is super helpful. Yeah. Because every time I go to upload like a new channel art, it's like, oh, you have the wrong dimensions. And I'm like, I don't even know what dimensions you want from me. So uh, that's really cool. That's yeah. probably, that would be my biggest use case right there. You can, you can layer in there. You can, you know, you can add text on top of things. Sometimes they're text, um, like this, uh, let's get groovy. Okay. Well, maybe I don't want to get groovy. So I'm just going to take that out. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, right. and, you know, I can take this one out as well. And then I can add my own, I can come over to the text ele element here. They got all kinds of different graphics. I can just bring those in, pop them in, size them up again. This, maybe this one's too big. Actually, that looks pretty good. doesn't It, it does that, look really good. Not, not too bad on the fly. Yeah. Right. Of uh, Wow. It's almost like I planned it, but I didn't. On this one, I, I seriously, I just, I just faked it. So, and Brian asks, is this the free version or the paid version? That you're this using is right the free. Now? The right now, I'm using the free version. So okay. you can. There's a lot you can do free. Where you get into the some of the paid versions, like you can see here now showing is a free graphic. But then as we scroll down, many of these, many oh, of these like some premium free. ones. Yeah, let's go. They're in the photos. That's this more prevalent in the photos. Where you come in again, a lot of free photos. If you want to jump in there, usually I have a hard time finding things that are not free. There we go. This one is a pro. 
So in most cases, like I can buy a, buy a pro image for a dollar, which is pretty great. Oh, yeah. I can use it anywhere <laughs> I want, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, right on. And so uh, just a great way to kind of, if you're struggling with, I, not, listen, I'm not a graphics design guy, but I've been able to do some pretty cool stuff with Canva. Well, and that's what it seems like it's directed towards, right? Like I don't know my way around graphics, but the one you created for the website there, the the image for that blog post looked like something I, you know, you would have paid someone to do. And so it looks nice, professional, shadow, yeah. good colors. Yeah. So about 10 minutes on that, that's right? Great. You know, I just grabbed that. This 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 one was actually a pre-done and I and it was free. This this bubble, this word bubble was free. You know, and, there's go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say these tools like this. You know, when you think there's so many of these for video editing too, that there's so many people now that are making spectacular content and they're not firing up Final Cut. They're not firing up Adobe Premiere. There's some tool that helps them with the transition, you know, just like plug and play. We'll make it look good. You give us the footage or like right here, right? They have a bunch of stock images. We can make it look really good, super fast. I'm always impressed by services like this that are taking that. You're not starting with just a blank canvas anymore. Um, it's, it's for kind of that intro user. Really cool. Yeah, you can try. They got a 30 day pro if you want to give it a try. And, um, and but the free version works. I've, I've pretty much been on the free version. I have paid for graphics as I've gone along. So I probably spent 15 or 20 bucks on graphics for these kinds of things. When you're done, you just click download it. You can download it as a PNG, a JPEG, a, a, a PDF, either standard or print. Um, so you got a bunch of different options. It works out really, really well. Give it a try. Uh, so they're gonna we're, we're gonna be talking about them here through the month of October. So give them a try. Theaverageguy.tv slash Canva. And like I said, anything you you if you sign up through that link, anything you buy or any plans you do help uh, help us here at theaverageguy.tv. So appreciate you guys doing that. Appreciate Canva uh, have, making that affiliate uh, relationship available so we could get that done as well. Uh, Mike, big thanks to Kyle last week who jumped in. That was a fun. That yeah, was that was a fun. lot of fun. Yes, yeah, I had a yeah. blast with that show. It was one I enjoyed going back through and doing the transcripts for, just because it was fun listening. To, he did he did a really nice job. Like mm -hmm. I, Kyle's kind of grown up on the show. I was talking to you after he dropped off, and I was talking to you afterwards, and I, I just said it's been kind of fun to watch Kyle kind of grow up on the show. He's really good at this. Like this is something yeah. he should be doing on a regular basis. So I Kyle, totally agree. You. Yeah, Kyle, thanks for for jumping in and, and, uh, and giving us the time. Some got me thinking about some things and some audio and, and so Kyle, thanks for jumping in, uh, and, and getting that done. Uh, we also want to talk a little bit about the October meetup. So we're, mm -hmm. since we're in October, October, Saturday, October 24th, you're going to want to join us, head out to the average guy.tv slash October OCT 2020 meetup. All one word. If you can't remember that it was too long, but that's what I needed. It's going to go in the show notes that way. I sent, our subscribers, if you go to the average guy.tv slash subscribe and you sign up for the newsletter, I actually am sending out kind of weekly updates now that these meetups are happening. Like I'm kind of motivated to send you guys updates on those. So if you hadn't subscribed, you might want to head over there and subscribe um, to that. Uh, that link will be in the show notes as well. But Mike, uh, that link will get you to Eventbrite if you get signed up and a couple of you have already. That puts you in the mix just to make sure I know how many are coming and how we're going to plan this. And the times are in there. I think I have eight one and eight. So 8 a.m. Central, 1 p.m. Central, uh, 8 p.m. Central. Did I say that right? 8 a.m., 1 p.m., 8 p.m. We're just getting together. You don't have to make them all. You can just kind of come and go. But it's going to be sometimes those slots in the morning. One will be to talk about what we're going to put on. Two will be a midway check of what we put on. Uh, the evening will be pictures. And maybe even if you've got time or you want to bring it, you could bring it actually to the meetup to show what you've done. That'd be a little taste cool. test. All right. Yeah, I think so. If you're in Europe, of course, you'll be awake before we are. So start your grill then. Do You don't have to like just join us, get in there. Australia, same deal. If you want to start your grill as we're ending, that would be awesome. We just love to have it. If you want to join as part of this kind of the streaming smokers, we're going to smoke. We're going to stream smokers. Say that 10 times fast. We're going to stream our smokers all day. Uh, and so if you want to be part of that crew, send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv, and we'll get you set up to be able to do that. Mike, I'm just going to have a webcam outside. I got it all set up. Power. I moved plugs so I can have my laptop plugged in with a with a, with a a camera. 
That's pointing what I'm at doing. the smoker. That's all I'm doing. doing. I think I'm doing an iPad just to make it easy. So I'm doing an iPad out there on a little stand, um, and that's the way I'm going. Um, I, I've decided I'm roasting chicken. So the Ooh, in the morning, nice. and I know that won't take all day, but I'm going to do Mark Robson's trick where uh, slow and slow, almost as slow as possible, really, just let that sit in there. And then um, I, and hopefully not catch fire like it did the last time, right? The drippings caught fire. Yeah. Um, uh, but then when it's done, I'm going to wrap it in tinfoil, throw it in the, uh, throw it in the cooler and let that sit. And what I'm really hoping to get is an all day meat, just drop it off the bone type deal. Mm. So when we get it on at eight, we'll bring that out. We'll show it. I'll have the camera in my kitchen. We'll be doing some things. So, um, and I think I'm going to do wings. So I think I'm going to put the wings on as the chicken's coming off or a, a, around that one o'clock slot, put the wings on for maybe a six o'clock, uh, something along those lines. I know they don't take that long, so I got to kind of figure out where, where they're going to go, but they're going to be my afternoon grill. So chicken, then wings, some, we won't be able to eat them all. We'll have to throw a party or something to do all that, but love to have you join us. Get signed up the average guy TV slash October 20 and October is OCT. 2020 meetup, two E's in that, M-E-E-T. Or check out the show notes, get signed up. If you can't remember anything of that, just send me an email, jim at theaverageguy.tv, and I will send you the link to it. Mike, I'm not really blasting that out on social because I don't want some Twitter jackass coming on. Like, <laughs> right. Blah, 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 right. We don't. Yeah. We, we, we kind of want to keep it to us. So keep we're just, it in the family on this one. Yeah. Yeah, we're just, we're just kind of mentioning it in the pot. You got any ideas? And you guys on, are all in the family. If you're listening to this, you're right. in the family. To- totally, you're yeah, invited. You're totally in the family. Yeah. Got any idea what you're gonna what you're gonna throw on the? Grill? You got me thinking. So if you're doing chicken, I might go ribs. So I might go ribs for the first bit. Those only take me about five hours. Um, and then I was thinking the same exact thing was wings um, after the first round. So I'll probably do ribs and wings, which will be kind of fun because we can both kind of compare how we do our wings. Uh, my wings don't take very long. <laughs> Um, but my ribs take about five hours. So we'll, uh, we'll try that out. I will, um, I'm going to take and copy and paste the link. To, uh, uh, there's the meetup link in the chat room. So if you want to head over there and get signed up on Eventbrite, you can do that right now. Again, Eventbrite just gives me an opportunity to know how many are coming and how to plan for this. So we've got a couple already signed up. You've got time as well. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it, this should be, this should be, I'm kind of look, Mike, I'm kind of looking forward to it. The Patreon meetup went well, and this would be a great opportunity to just do what we do best, right? Which is just grill meats, smoke some meat. So yep. it'll be super good. Hey, um, you came on, gave us kind of a ham primer. We, we saw a really shady looking antenna hanging off the back <laughs> of your house. Yes. Uh, and we, you, but you got some updates for, I mean, you, like, I've never seen anybody accelerate into these kinds of technologies like you do. You're so good at this. So give us a, spend a little bit of time, catch us up a little bit on the ham side. We're going to actually, I think maybe do a live demo. Of yeah. What it sounds like, I think that's, that's kind of cool. So yeah, yeah. hopefully we can so do a little catch demo. Us up, catch us up a little bit. Well, okay, so when we were talking about getting into this, it was my very first time diving into HF. And I think I hinted at the fact that we had to hunt around for some RFI, right? There was some radio frequency interference that was affecting my ham radio play. And you guys know that on the last show, I mentioned that I solved that issue by putting TP-Link smart plugs on all the devices I found in the home. Um, and then whenever I want to play radio, I just tell a lady to turn off the RFI devices. I put them all into one group and, and we're good to go. Um, well, the hard part about ham radio, though, is that obviously when you live in a neighborhood like I do, uh, it's not just your house that you're picking up. Sadly, you're picking up every house around you in the RFI. Uh, so and, and that's out of your control, right? I mean, I could go over to my neighbor's house, knock on the door and say, hey, could I come around your house with my little pocket radio and find all the devices that are interfering and turn them off? Would that be okay? Yeah, that's, no, that's not, not creepy, go well. at, all. No, not not creepy, creepy at all. Not creepy at all. No, no, definitely not. I already get uh, some weird looks. We'll, we'll talk about that. We talk about my antenna upgrade, um, which we already talked about. But um, so the, the only way to really help that out is to fix your antenna. And when I say fix your antenna, there's no perfect antenna, but there are ways that you can... Um, make it better, especially when you're in a neighborhood. So number one is, is to really not use a vertical antenna. Uh, vertical antennas are vertically polarized and a lot of RFI tends to be vertically polarized as well. 
um, and they're going to pick up a lot more interference from a neighborhood setting. So check mark box for me. I was already not using a vertical antenna. You guys saw that I use a dipole. A dipole antenna is a wire antenna that goes uh, horizontal or in a V shape. Usually the center's up a little bit higher than the legs uh, if you can't get your legs up high. And, you know, it's this is one of those things, Jim, I was telling my wife as we've been driving around now, whenever I'm in the car driving around like neighborhoods or when I pass anything, I'm like, oh, dude, I'm jealous of that guy's property. Look where he could hang that antenna. Like he's got some big trees in his backyard. The guys even at the end of my cul-de-sac have these massive, you know, 100 foot trees uh, that would just be amazing to have in my backyard because I can hang an antenna off. But um, so so we're using a dipole antenna, which is already check marks. The second thing, really, the only thing you can do is get it up in the air. Uh, you really need to get these things as high as possible. Uh, number one, that just helps propagation in general. You're going to hear better. But it also, the mo it's more distance you're putting between your antenna and those RFI devices. So nothing's going to be perfect. Uh, you're always going to have issues with noise and RFI. Uh, but I just knew that if I could get it any higher, that would be great. And so uh, I think everyone called it in the chat that I wouldn't really stick with my antenna setup for long. And it's, it's partly true. It's that I have the same antenna, but I have actually changed the mast on it twice uh, since we talked. So I think last time we talked, I think I had the 10 foot PVC pipe, didn't I? Sticking out of my roof. I, I think so. I so, think so, right. It, it was kind of, it was, it was droopy little. though. <laughs> yep. So uh, the setup I have right now is I have a old satellite dish mount. So I took the satellite dish because we don't use it anymore, took the dish off, but kept the mount. And it actually makes a perfect mount for a mast. And what I had done before was I had used PVC pipe that kind of slid perfectly into the mount. Um, but and that's what I had on the last show. And it was 10 foot tall. And then I put the center of the dipole, I mounted the center of it onto that PVC post. Well, that PVC post was not thick enough. I gradually over time was just starting to droop more and more. And I just knew at some point, it probably would have lasted for a decent amount of time, but it was going to crack and I would have had more of an issue uh, than I want to deal with. But I really didn't come up with my perfect solution yet. I kind of put a bandaid on that because what I did was I just went out and got a bigger PVC pipe, a thicker one, and I slid it over top of that PVC pipe. So I had two PVC pipes, one that fit into the mount to kind of provide the actual supported mast, and the other one slid around the outside really to just give it some more structural integrity. Uh, but even that one, first of all, it was only 10 feet higher than the house, uh, which was okay, but not great. Uh, and second of all, it just started to droop too. Um, it, it wasn't the best. So uh, I did a lot of research kind of looking around and, and there were there were quite a few options. Really, a lot of people actually suggested to try my hand at a vertical antenna um, because they come with the mast, they're ground mounted, but they said but we kind of all came to agreement that um, being in a neighborhood, like we talked about, vertically polarized, not good when you have that much R5. Verticals are fantastic if you are out in the country and don't have trees or anything, but you don't have anyone around you. A vertical is a great antenna, uh, but not for the neighborhood. So all I ended up doing was actually going out and getting a top rail. And top rail is you can get it at Lowe's, Home Depot. It's meant for your chain link fences. So if you go to the chain link fence, fence section, and the great part about it is they actually, it doesn't have to be kind of that standard steel color they actually have the ones that are coated in a color like black i actually was the only option at, at my low so i went to lowe's grabbed the black uh top rail and they're 12 foot sections so i grabbed two of those and uh i grabbed the so they already the top rail you know one end gets skinny so it can slide into the other piece but then they also come with you can add more integrity to that joint by they have kind of these steel joiners so you slide the steel joiner on you slide the two poles together and uh and you've got it so that's what I ended up going with for a mast. So I, I now have a 24 foot mast on top of my, you know, whatever it is, 12 foot, 13 foot house at the corner, at the bottom corner, because my roof is obviously pitched as a ranch style. And this is on the bottom corner of the roof. So the lowest part of the roof is where that mount sits. And uh, so I got up there. Actually, this was just a few days ago, got up on the roof the other day. And I didn't really account for the weight difference because I took the PVC pipe down, grabbed the antenna off it, mounted it to the top of this, uh, pole, this 24 foot pole, and I'm sitting on my roof and I go kind of like a pole vaulter and I'm hoisting this 24 foot pole up. Like I said, I didn't think about the weight though. And it actually started to go off the opposite side of the house. I don't know how it actually, I actually got it into the mast before I started to fall off the roof and I swung myself around, but I, I held on to the, uh, to the satellite antenna holder. 
Um, but we got it up. So now the antenna is up an extra, uh, was it 14 feet, right? So it's up 24 instead of 10. And it, it's worked really well. I've been, I've been really surprised at, at how well it's worked. I'm, I'm getting a lot more distance. Um, it's always hard to judge. And, and Jim, this is probably the most frustrating thing about ham radio. The band propagation, meaning how far I can hear and who can hear me, changes on a minute-by-minute -minute basis and especially a day-by-day -day basis. Today, I could hear Finland. Tomorrow, I could hear nothing, right? And so it's super hard to test whether an upgrade I just made helped or not because I have no reference point. There's no standard for uh, figuring it out if, if, you've, if you've done well or not. But I, I've given it a few days now, and I would say averaging it out, it, it's, it's going all right. So that was kind of the first uh, upgrade we made. My, uh, my neighbor... Uh, down the street and uh, on the corner is a big ham guy, and he has one of these kinds of antennas. Now, oh, I'm we're, jealous. We're not in a neighborhood unlike yours. He has it behind his house, and it goes up quite a ways. And then he just hoists the antenna up right through the through that pole. Mm -hmm. and he's got a a line that goes down, and so I've been eyeing his setup. Now, this isn't his exact setup; it's just one like this. It's not quite as big as this. It's a little bit smaller. I'm not sure he would catch him climbing on it like this but it's that same style it's the triangles that 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 make their way up right reinforced and uh, he's got a couple antennas on there as well so i've been um you know it's funny it's been it's been there the whole time we've lived here you've only really paid attention it. now yeah yeah well and, and that's what my neighbor said so uh actually it's been funny because they they obviously saw when i hung it the first time and they made we all joked about it uh, but i'm pretty close to the people in my cul-de-sac but then uh all of a sudden i was going out to hockey the other night and my buddy or my neighbor across the street goes hey try to talk to mars now or like what's your limit now and i was like yeah and he goes man when'd you put that upgrade up and i said uh, seven o'clock i said where were you i almost fell off my roof doing it. he goes dude you should have came and knocked on my door i would have come over and i think that's the funny part i told him i said i said uh, i think my wife would probably uh, ask me to do a written apology to everyone else to see this this uh antenna and he goes dude i think it's kind of cool actually you know i've told a buddy now i got a ham for a neighbor and and uh, but I will, i'll share just real quick just so you guys can see it's it's not obnoxious um but i mean it is definitely noticeable right so it's this black mass so i'm this is this is taken from the cul-de-sac side so this is what the cul-de-sac side is seeing um i kind of live on a lot that has street on all three sides so it's completely surrounding the property. And really, it's funny. In the backyard, you don't really notice it because I have a lot of trees that line the street. Uh, but it does get up there as a ways. I mean, so the mass goes all the way up. And then, uh, like I said, the dipole has two legs. So this is set up in the V formation. One leg goes to the back tree. And this leg, actually, this is just rope from this spot of the house up. And the antenna probably starts, I think, right about there. This is the short end of an off-center fed dipole. So on an off-center fed one side of the antenna is actually shorter than the other. It's split up 66%, 33%. So whatever your length is, um, you've got one thirds and two thirds. So I actually put the short side here. And the reason being, because I used to actually have the long side of the antenna coming over to a mast that was on this corner of the house. And I thought, you know, okay, so I've got wire running right over my attic. And I do have two security cameras here. And those are two of the offending devices that I actually have to unplug when I want to play radio. Uh, I, and I think it's the the way they get power. They have one of those jankety POE, but you actually have to plug it into a wall and then run that into the POE. Um, it, it won't work off a POE switch. So I was like, you know what? Instead of having wire run over all this stuff, I'll use the short end and uh, then have the long end go to the backyard to a tree. And I think that's actually helped out a lot too, where a, more of the antenna now is away from the house, not over anything electrical. Uh, which is which has actually helped out. It's it's been good. Do you think you'll have any neighbor problems with it in the future? I don't think so. Um, I mean, in in the world of ham, this is the most unobtrusive antenna you can get. I mean, there are guys putting there's if you guys want to Google, Google the step IR antenna. And there are people putting this step IR. It's a Yagi antenna. So it's got literally so you got your think about, you know, those um, TV antennas you see in, in like the mm -hmm. country or, or in neighborhoods Old where school. they have one straight and they have the, yeah. the rails off the side. Think of a massive, gigantic version of that on a rotator so they can direct it. People are putting those on top of their house. So uh, our HOA, I did check, it does not have any rule against antennas. So I think that would be really the only way I would get in trouble is if um, the HOA had a rule against visible antennas and and they don't. So um, yeah. I think until I start interfering with people's electronics, 
uh, I don't think anyone will have an issue. When, so. when satellite TV doesn't work during the Nebraska game, that, it, that might be an issue. Yes, it might be, start to make people's. Yeah. And really, that's uh, TVs are the can be affected by RFI. So you'll notice that uh, this is actually the most common reason that happens is there's a bad transformer from the electrical company. So one of those uh, ground mounted transformers or one that's in the air has a crack in it. And so people around there, their TVs will flicker. Um, they'll have some really weird things from that RFI and people have experienced something like that, but really you need to be pushing out a lot more power than I am uh, to have that issue. So no one will experience anything. Do you, um, do you worry about lightning? Yeah, I do. That's the next step of what I need to do. Um, you know, the, the funny part about this is you learn a lot. And Jim, I don't know how I missed this in science class. I, I missed this in every single science class. You know, I always just thought that metal attracts lightning. I was like, well, you know, it's going to attract lightning being up there. Uh, metal doesn't attract lightning, but metal does conduct lightning. So it, when lightning hits it, it's going to travel through it and destroy anything it's touching. Um, right. So that's kind of the difference is I always thought like it, there was a, there's not a higher likelihood chance that this is going to get struck by lightning than if that was wood, for example. But um, it is something you have to worry about. Obviously, in Omaha uh, it doesn't happen too often, but there are precautions you take. So what you do is you actually um, I need to do that's my project this coming weekend is I need to run a ground wire from that base. The, the base of the satellite and they actually had one for the satellite dish. I took it off when I didn't think I was going to ever use it, um, put it back on, run it to a ground rod right below it. And then what they also have is for your antenna, the coax that runs straight down that goes into my um, basement and connects to my radio, the coax cable actually where it's split, you have a, what's called a lightning arrestor. And so it's a connector on each side and it actually, when it senses that it'll short itself and go to it'll be it's attached to a ground rod. So the idea is that most of the electricity will go right into the ground rod. Um, it's still going to destroy anything on the other end. So you always unplug the coax from your radio when you're done playing radio. Um, if you have lightning in the area. Well, lightning always follows the path of least resistance. And if that metal yep. is the path of least resistance going straight to the ground, it will be attracted. It will go. It will seek it and go to it and then yep. shoot it down. But, um, yeah, you want to make sure, I mean, you, you, you've got a big metal thing hanging out in the air. Uh, you know, if, if there's lighting in the area, it's probably going to hit it. So yeah, having it grounded is key and having it grounded well is key. That's yeah. one of the, you want to make sure that thing is grounded. That 1.21 gigawatts that comes off the, <laughs> yes, <laughs> right that's thing. how we all know it, right? Back to the future. We're all going to 1.21 gigawatts. Um, yeah, so you know you want to get that grounded just as soon as and, possible. Can. And you know it's funny, grounding is actually one of the most controversial issues in ham radio because um, there is all sorts of rules, old rules, myths that you're supposed to follow when it comes to grounding. Um, but really, what you need to follow is the electrical code. Yeah. And the hardest part about that for me, my biggest uh, headache I'm going to have when I work on the grounding is that my gr electrical ground, so my AC ground for my house is actually not a ground rod outside. I wish it was. Mine is tied to the water pipe in the basement. So my water pipe, which is valid, that meets code. Um, you can use the water pipe, but that means that my external antenna, because any ground you have, they all need to be bonded together. So I just can't put a ground rod outside and have it ground my antenna and call that good. You're supposed to have that ground rod bonded to your to any other ground for the house so i'll have to figure out a way to run a thick gauge wire or braid they usually br use braid quite a bit into the house and run it all the way to the water pipe it's going to be interesting you're not supposed to tap into the ac ground wire because actually where that punches into the house is right by my electrical panel yeah. so if i could just bond it right to the wire that runs from that panel to the water pipe that'd be easy but I'm going to have to run a, a certain wire. So there's so much when you get into this gym, it's like one of those hobbies that just never ends. I'm like, oh, geez, there's so many requirements that I need to, to think yeah. about. But yeah, grounding is the next phase. And it does actually help with RFI sometimes. Sometimes you can get rid of some static if, or some, they call it the common mode interference. Uh, gr proper grounding can sometimes help with that as well. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good to, it's good to file, follow code. This is one of those where that wire, if you do get struck by lightning, that ground wire is going to get hot. Oh, yeah. Like in, in fast. And so you want to make sure this isn't one where you want to kind of rig it. You no. want to make sure it's like you're doing it right. It's to code. It's in the right things. It's doing the right stuff. Yep. So all, 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 um, all kind of important. Did you also, um, 
did you change the, 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 the actual ham radio? Are you going through the computer now or what? Did you, did you make some upgrades there? <laughs> I did. Of course I did. I can't yeah. just... Can't. So uh, you guys will recognize that when we did the show, I had the radio actually right behind me in this spot right here, and I was using the Mac. Um, number one, it was it was not good posture. I think it was driving my occupational therapy uh, wife nuts that I was sitting in like... Because this workbench doesn't have a spot to put your feet, so I was hunched over. I was in a bar stool playing radio. And honestly, I didn't, I didn't sit down for long periods of time. I didn't get to enjoy my radio because I wasn't comfortable. So... I brought the radio actually back to this main setup here. And you guys have seen probably pictures of my setup. I have a nice, I have four monitors right in front of me right here. Got my gaming rig that I'm coming to you guys on. Um, and there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with ham radio via the computer. I showed you guys that last time. We did some, uh, some FT8, which is some mode you can do. But even more than that, uh, there are some great applications that let you fully control your radio from your computer. Um, so you actually don't need to be sitting there playing with your radio too much. You can be it's the same radio, right? You're just using an application connected over a USB cable to control it. So I did. I brought my radio over here. It's been fantastic having it here because now I sit in my comfy chair and I actually have another mic right here. This is my ham radio mic. So this is connected nice. to my ham radio. Same exact setup. So I have two uh, microphones yeah. and uh, can just pull that over. And I actually have the ham radio now running through my GoXLR. So I got everything wired up. And this has been great. It's like a game changer. Once I found out like once you're comfortable being comfortable doing something is a is a huge thing and just convenience right and so comfortable and convenience was kind of my goal uh so yeah so i run it through the through the go xlr so i actually don't even need to switch anything right now if i want to listen to my radio i just throw up one of the sliders on my go xlr mixer and i can listen just switch over to the, this microphone and uh i'm good can to go we, can we hear it like can you you can yeah you play, you play so we can hear it. i know some folks know what this sounds like but but uh, bring it up here. Let's, let's yeah. Know. So so this is what's funny too. So you want to know that one of the biggest offenders of RFI is actually this LED strip that I put on during the show to make my background look good. So we might hear a little static, but let me try here. First of all, I'll give you guys what static sounds like. So when there's nothing heard, well, let's go tune up to someone talking. Talking about antennas, they must be listening to the podcast. Right. <laughs> so they're talking about their setup. That's usually what you're going to find guys talking about. Let's see what the other guys are talking about over here. Also, thank you for your service there in the in the military, and I'm very happy to know that you are. So now I know how Star Wars did some of their radio uh, special effects. That's what my buddy said. As you're scrolling around. So let's see here if we can get. I expect to hear somebody say, let's get set up for our attack run. <laughs> There's another one. Oh, seriously, they, they must have just recorded ham when they were making some of those radio effects. So what that is, is if you're not perfectly on frequency, as you're scrolling, when I'm scrolling this wheel, I'm, I'm changing frequency. And it's like the radio, right? The old school radio. As you start to adjust, you could hear them start to come in. And so it sounds like they're kind of, whoa, 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 and all of a sudden, as you get right on the frequency they're talking on, it it clears up. And that's what they sound like. Um, but there you can see we have two stations talking over each other. There's an owl in a tree someplace close by. Some guy's got an owl in a tree close by. <laughs> Uh, it kind of feels like we've gone back to the 1950s, you know? It, well, I mean, we yeah, kind of have, right? Like this has been around for so long. Right. Uh, I, I just, and so what I was just doing there is kind of cool when you look at the, uh, it is. Yeah. So um, Andrew called it that single sideband. So this is kind of one thing we didn't get into. And uh, I'll give you guys a, here's, here's another fact you can take to your next cocktail party. You'll love this. So back in the day um, on the HF bands for HF, people used AM radio. So just so think of AM radio like you tune into your car. They used AM as the mode of communicating. Well, AM takes a lot of power for for how far it gets. I guess is the best way to put it. It's not very efficient, right? It takes a lot of power. And so what they decided was so AM has a carrier in the middle and two sidebands to it. That's how the audio looks. Like if you were to look at it, you would see the carrier in the middle and you'd see two sidebands. They said, well, you know, we don't need super high fidelity for talking on HF radio. Right, like this isn't the super high quality stuff we need. So let's chop out the carrier and one of the sidebands, 
And so now what you're left with is called single sideband, which is by far nowadays the most common mode to communicate on HF radio. You still use FM sometimes, so frequency modulation. You still use FM for uh, the short distance, the ones that I was talking on for the first year that I was licensed when you're doing short range, UHF and VHF. That uses FM. Uh, but on on this radio, mainly you're using sideband. So the radios have, I can switch to AM if I want um, and talk in AM. And some old school guys are just like, they're not leaving AM. They love their AM stuff. So you'll tune around sometimes and you'll hear the AM guys. And man, it does sound good. I'll, I'll say that. Um, but the amount of power it takes is just kind of, it's useless really for, for what you do on radio. And then, the, so they made it even more complicated. There's an upper sideband and a lower sideband. Don't ask me why they didn't just pick one and stick with it. But now you have to memorize on which band you're supposed to use upper or lower sideband. It's not like a regulation. It's not like a rule. It's more like a gentleman's agreement that if you are below 10 megahertz, then you're going to use lower sideband. If you're above 10 megahertz, you're going to use upper sideband. There's no difference. It's not like one works better than the other. So I really have no idea why they didn't just pick one for all communications. But um, that's what they did. So be some reason. Yeah, yeah, probably some reason there. Somewhere in there. Ham didn't fit into the pan, so they cut the end off. <laughs> and it does sound funny. So he brings up a good point. Let's just do that. Let's switch to the opposite sideband. And uh, I'll kind of show you guys what that sounds like. I want to try and see if I can find a really strong signal here to show you guys this, because a weak signal is kind of hard. Well, here's an AM station. So Mexican radio comes in. So it's a really high pitch. If I switch to AM... So I'm picking up some, but see how good that's like, it sounds pretty clear, right? And it's a super powerful station. Um, but let's go ahead and switch back to lower sideband. There's a guy talking right here. I think I found one. Or is this just a tone? That's just a tone. Are you tuning on the radio or are you tuning on the computer? I'm on the radio right now. I'll show you guys the app here in a second. Oh, see, I, see, the problem on HF, too, is you can sometimes only hear one side of the conversation, depending on how far away the other guy is. So we not. Be, oh, I found one more. We'll try this one and then we'll. Where'd you go? There he is. And uh, your signal reports. Uh, okay. A bit of QSB. It, it varies anywhere. Between, so he's pretty good there. Uh, we'll switch to the opposite sideband. And he stopped talking, of course. But you kind of heard at the beginning. And, and so it's weird. You would think that you would still be able to hear it because you're like, okay, I'm just picking one of the sides, but you're really not. They are kind of two different. So yeah. there's your fun little lesson. Your, no, your it's cool. It's good to lesson. hear it. It's good and to then hear I'll, it. I'll show you guys real quick the app. So the app I chose to go with, and if you're a ham, hopefully you've, you've heard of this app because it's amazing. It's Ham Radio Deluxe. And it really is, I would say, the... It's it's kind of the game chain. It's the leading um, application for if you want a full-featured suite for for ham radio so let me share my screen real quick here um share this one so what you'll see with ham radio deluxe is it has like i said it's the full suite for ham radio what i use it for so there's a lot of modules that come with it but on this left side here you can see this is my radio so in a in kind of a computer version so we can see actually the sound coming in right here the different levels so as we turn that up let's get tuned on this guy you guys can hear What I have. So there's the uh, meter right here, here, and there's that uh, S meter. Like, uh, oh, geez, this guy's running 1.4 kilowatts. So 1,400 watts. How close is that to 1.21 gigawatts? Yeah, it's pretty far away. <laughs> um, but he's running 1,400 watts compared to my 100. So he probably wouldn't even be able to hear me if I keyed up. But the great part about this is that I don't need to touch the radio. So a lot of times when I'm searching for POTA, um, parks on the air people, I'll know what frequency they're going to be on because they're on a spotting site. And so I can just uh, 
change right there. So I just changed the frequency of my radio and my radio instantly reflects it on the physical radio, which is great. You can switch your band here, set all your different noise reduction, things like that. But really the great part about it too is it connects to my logbook. So over here on the right side is my logbook. So I'm logging every single contact I make. Well, if I go to add a contact, a lot of times you're doing this really fast. And what you'll notice is actually on the frequency for it, it just it just knows because it's connected to the radio what frequency it's on. So it's one less thing you have to enter when it comes to logging something because it just always knows what frequency your radio is on. Um, and, and, you know, this is kind of, I know that USB connection to your radio isn't totally new to ham radio, uh, but, you know, it's relatively new to ham radio before, you know, and even when I was doing parks on the air before I started using my iPad, you're manually doing this in a notebook. And then, um, and there's no problem with that. There's no requirement that you have a log, but uh, it's nice. And a lot of people like it when you upload your log to a common site where they can, you know, confirm their contact with you. And it's, I don't know, it's just kind of, there's no hard and fast rule about it, uh, but people really like it. So most of the time you're going to want to get your um, logbook digital anyway. Um, so having some sort of app like this that can pull all this stuff in is really nice. And there's so many other features of this. There's satellite tracking. A lot of guys are really into talking off satellite repeaters. So there are a lot of satellites, low earth orbit satellites circling around that are specifically meant for ham radio guys. Whoa, I didn't think about that. I pulled that mm -hmm. on the wrong screen. Um, and a lot of guys really love because it's the challenge, right? That, that satellite's only going to pass over you for about maybe eight to 10 minutes. Um, at, at the best, right? It may even go faster than that, depending on where it is. And you don't know, okay, do I need to aim my antenna straight up in the air? Is it going barely over the horizon? Where am I going to have to point my antenna to get this satellite? So there's a, there's some satellite tracking in here that you can do your digital modes uh, through a module here as well. Um, it's really the kind of the full featured suite. There are so many things that this does. Um, and the the more powerful beefy radio you have with more features, the the more that this software can even do for you, uh, which is which is great. It, it is a little bit pricey. Um, it's a hundred dollars. So right now I just started using this a week ago. I'm doing a 30 day free trial just to make sure that I fully utilize all the features because there are a lot of free logging programs out there that are very that, that are great. Um, but man, once I got into this, I should not have done the free trial because now I'm kind of, I feel spoiled, um, when I'm doing things like this, but, uh, you know, the things about a digital log book too, that I like, the thing I didn't mention is for this reason right here. So let's say I hear a guy out there and it's K4, um, x-ray uniform. So when I type him in, it instantly pulls up the last two times we talked. So I'm like, Oh, Dude, and it pulls in from online his name, right? Because it's using the online database. So instantly with that first second, I'm like, Rich, dude, you and I just talked on the 26th. Uh, we were actually over on single sideband on 20 meters was the last time we talked. Like, oh yeah, I remember talking to you. How's it going? And it's and you can add in comments here. So I can say, hey, like we talked about uh, my antenna setup. So I have comments in here for everyone I talk to if I do a lengthy conversation. And then next time it comes up, it's like, oh yeah, remember last time we talked about your YouTube channel? Uh, things like that. So it makes it super quick and easy to kind of jog your memory on, have I talked to this guy before or, or have I not? So a lot of just advantage here of using a, a nice. digital log book and something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, nice. That's why I podcast. So I remember conversations. Right. I'm getting kind of old. So I don't, you know, there's some conversations we've had years ago. If I didn't record them in a podcast, I wouldn't, wouldn't have remembered them. That, that's pretty cool, Mike. That's that looks really cool. Like that's one of those. When you showed me that, I'm like, oh, oh now I'm thinking about this. <laughs> like, oh, this, oh, man, if we could get Jim into ham radio, that would be my day. Oh, my God. Well, I. I got to get the um, I've got to get the drone that first flies up into the air when somebody, you know, although lately with the pandemic, my neighbors are moving around a lot more. That thing would be up and down all day. <laughs> yeah. Plus the kids coming and going. I Tim is here with me now. So anyways, but yeah, no, I don't need another thing, but it's super cool, Mike, that, that you've gotten into this. And, uh, and and I think fun for those in the community that have been into it and are now kind of like maybe getting re-enthused about it because you are. So do we have, have you, have you connected with anybody on ham? That's a, that's a listener. 
Yeah, we have a few other. Obviously, okay. um, Andrew out in the chat, he's one. Um, Ron, big one. There's a few more good. I'm sure that I'm forgetting. Who? Because we do have a channel for it out in Discord too. Okay, good. Um, and that's good. the other thing too. If you guys are on HF and Andrew asked what bands I'm on, I'm on uh, 40 through 10. So that's what my off center fed dipole does. I spend, you know, right now with the sun cycle, I spend most of my day on 40 or 20. Um, right now, what we were just listening to, that was 40 meters. So we're uh, around 7.2 megahertz was where we were tuned in on. Uh, but I do spend, you know, 20 during the day is a little bit better. 40 definitely at night. Um, and then hopefully when the sun kind of peaks back up, we'll get maybe some more 10, 10 meter band uh, going. And I would love to get an antenna up for 80 meters or 160. I really just don't have the room on my property the way it's configured to put an even longer antenna, but I have, I've have thought about it. I've, I've kind of been mapping some stuff out to see if I could put like an N fed out there or, or some way to, to get that going. But it's, it's just, it's Jim, like we talked about, it's one of those hobbies where you could ask me every single week, what do you update? And I would have something to tell you because yeah, yeah. you can never perfect it. And you can always do some little tweak um, to make things better. That's just, man, I just been loving cool. it. Cool. Well, good. Good to, get an update from you and kind of, and again, I'm sure there's some, some folks out there who've been doing this a while who are encouraged to hear some of this, that you're doing it. Like everybody likes to hear when somebody else gets into their hobby. Mm -hmm. And, uh, uh, so super cool. You know, it's like a podcaster. I get all geeked out when somebody else decides to become a podcaster. Yep. You know, you're like, Oh, there's so many things to learn, right? There's so many things to know. So super cool. No, so we'll, 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 as we'll continue to do some more shows until you guys get sick of it. So keep, <laughs> you know, Mike, keep growing and we'll, we'll probably as we get closer to Christmas, we had planned this update for later in the fall, but, but with, when Chris couldn't do it, you were just like, Hey, I could give the update now. So I said, yeah. 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 And also I'll think of some fun facts we can learn too. And, uh, you know, Andrew asked if you and I would actually be within 70 centimeter band uh, range and we would. So that'd be the cool part. If Jim did, even if I just got Jim, I should probably just give him one of my Balfang radios and uh, and tell him to go take his tech test because uh, not actually not on simplex, though. I should clarify uh, it would have to be through a repeater. Uh, we do not have line of sight between Jim's house and mine radio wise. Uh, we'd be close, but probably not. So we'd have to be talking through a repeater. Uh, but yeah, oh yeah, we're definitely in the same locale. We could talk on a few actually repeaters that we could both hear just, from our houses. I'm just going to drive to your house. Like I can't deliver <laughs> beer or cigars via ham radio. So when I want to talk to you, I'm just going to come over to your house. That sounds good. Yeah. I like that better. Good. Mike, good update. A couple uh, other updates uh, kind of uh, before we go. Mike, one is I've switched, you know, for years, for 30 years, I have tried to move my to-do lists from paper and I'm super effective on paper, like super effective. And I was a Franklin planner guy for a lot of years. I carried around this nerdy notebook that had Franklin, you know, Covey, Frank, now Franklin Covey was Franklin when I first started with him, you know, paid, you'd buy these pages each year you'd get a catalog and be like, Ooh, what kind of, they'd have different styles, Monticello and all these other, right? My mom was huge into that oh, too. Yeah. Yep. I, oh, dude, there was nothing better than a Franklin, like the smell of a Franklin planner. That's so funny. Is what she said too. Like the smell of it was just like unique. Yeah. I swear to God, they put additives in their ink <laughs> for that kind of thing. Right. 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 It, was, it was just like order and love and acceptance all wrapped up in, in the paper smell. Right. And so, you know, you'd, you'd get new, I'd always get a new, you know, batch of planner pages at the end of the year and in put them in binders and, you know, all those kinds of things. It's the only thing in my life I was actually organized on. Now I didn't actually follow the stuff I put in there, but the planner looked good. So over the last, I don't know, you know, I was a Palm three guy and then a Palm mm -hmm. five and I've been trying to move my to do since then, really, I've been trying to move my to do list online and nothing has worked right even when Wonderlist came out, everybody moved to Wonderlist for whatever reason. Trello, whatever. Those th couldn't do it. I tried. I got on Wonderlist. I built a list for a week. I ditched it. I just couldn't get to it. So I don't know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I said to myself, and I don't know why, I'm making the change. Like I am going to force myself. And I think I've been listening to Windows Weekly and Paul Throt was talking about to do. And I had seen the to do application on Windows. It, available on the web and in Windows. It's the old Wonderlist uh, that Microsoft bought. 
uh, then did nothing with for a couple of years. And then they're bringing it out and making it as part of the office suite. And um, I think I got it. Like, I think I have finally moved. I, I, so my work PC is here. I've got a screen right above it. That is the full time to do screen. This is what I needed. And the screens touch. So I can just, as I'm done with oh, things, nice. I can just check them off. If I need to add more things, I just swivel to this chair, go to the web, add them in, type them in, boom. But during the day, thanks, Tony, for that tweet, by the way. You just tweeted us. Um, during the day, I'll be working here and just checking things off. And that, that's what I figured is what I needed is I needed that thing on something I could see all the time. I'm a visual guy. That was going to be my question is what clicked. So it was having yeah. a monitor devoted to that 100% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I get this 22-inch touchscreen that I bought years ago to do some things with. And plug that in. Was that, that the kitchen in. PC? Was that that, that had one? been the kitchen PC. Yeah, yeah okay. been the kitchen PC. Yeah, that thing's been a bunch of different stuff. It's the weather PC, too. I've got, I can bring up my radar on it. And, um, but to have that to-do list. And then um, today I figured out if I load the app, from Microsoft, the Windows app, you can put it in dark mode. Mm. And go, oh, that just, that, now that is like, I'm in. <laughs> like, I, it looks great. It's easy on the eyes. But having it um, all in one place in my workspace, that was the key. Like having it there so <clears throat> I could just check things off with my finger as I yeah. go, boop, boop, boop on a PC. So I thought, well, how am I going to do this at work? Because my work setup is completely different. I have, yeah, I've got this big 34 or 44 or whatever inch monitor, but I don't like, I don't want that. that I want to see the to do list all the time. That's the key. It needs to be there all the time. So I took my Surface 3 that's sitting right behind me here on screen and I uh, took the power cable in because it's in a dock here. And it's just going to leave it at work. So the power dock is there. And then I'm just going to grab in the morning. So I go in, I'll just undo that, throw that, because that's an easy thing to take to work with me. It's touch screen as well. And then it makes a satisfying ding when yeah. I close something out. You know, when you close something out, it just makes this little nice little ding. Right. And um, it, and it, so I set it up with the, with the Surface or with the Pro, Surface Pro. Just put the kickstand out and set it down on the desk. Monitor here. Uh, surface to my left and then laptop to my right. And I've got kind of three screens like I do here. And it, I did it one day and it was like, this is great. You've got me thinking about that now too. Cause Jim, my thing is I, oh, I start doing everything digital and then I fall out of it because I just, the notepad is always there. Right. But the screen's not. So I think you might've solved my issue too, is I have my notepad everywhere, but I never have a screen that's fully dedicated to notes or to do's. And so maybe taking my iPad in and having that just be the always on screen and just have it dedicated strictly to that, that could be my answer too. You might've solved my problem. Man, well, let, let me know. It, it, it took me forever to figure out I need to see the thing because that's what the difference, that's what paper was. It was always on my desk. Exactly. I could yep. always see it. And you'd be like, Jim, that's dumb. No, that's the way I'm wired. Like I need to have everything out in front of me all the time. It's why I'm a monitor hound. Because right. I want every monitor to have a reason and I want it to be showing something. You know, I have this monitor uh, up here that normally shows what's going on in my Google Analytics. So I know when people hit the website. But during this show, it's the audio. Uh, it's, it's what feeds Spreaker, right? It has, yep. I have Twitter and all my cameras on this monitor right below it, right? These are the work, these two are the work monitors that I have here. I have a dedicated Discord uh, box that in monitor that just has discord on all the time. Cause I know if I don't have it up, I will forget about it. Yep. You know, I'm the same exact way. Yeah. I have, yeah. I'm a monitor hound too. And I have always something dedicated. My right one over here is discord too. I have a whole monitor that always discord all day. Mm -hmm. um, I don't sit down here for work because I can't fit my work laptop on here um, on this yeah. desk. But, uh, but when I'm down here, it's, it's just, well, there's the work laptop. Now I just switched those around yesterday. So now I have a, 24 inch monitor here that had been the 34 inch monitor. And, and actually that setup wasn't as good because it didn't fit as well in here. So now that I have a 24 that fits perfectly underneath the touchscreen monitor. So they are literally like they're, they're bezel to bezel mm -hmm. and it looks great. Right. And then the um, laptop sits off to the side and it fits on the desk. And so when I'm working, I'm literally sitting this way. And then when I'm podcasting, I'm sitting this way and it, 
it's dude. It's like I, it's taken me six months, but I think I have it all kind of nailed down. Now that it's time, now it's time to go back to the office. You got it all figured well, out. Well, right? <laughs> here's the deal, though. I think I figured out how I want my office set up to be too mm-hmm. through all this. Like this is this kind of forced me into some productivity rhythms that it's like you know it's really important that I get monitors in the right place. And each one has a purpose and I know why they're doing them and each workflow it's, it was like figuring out workflows, yeah. you know, based on monitors. So no, I'm not, I mean, it's always a continual process of figuring out what works best for you. But I was, I was trying to figure out why have I been so much more productive at home than I ever was in the office. And yeah, some of it is my friends distract me. Maybe that's the other way around, <laughs> but um, <laughs> just to be honest, uh, but no, I've got more, I have more screen real estate at here than I do. And so I can be mad. The more, the more screens I have, the more productive I can be. So getting to do, uh, which you know, choose the application of your choice, but certainly what Microsoft's doing is going to integrate in with a whole bunch of stuff. If you're already in the space available web and there's an Android app and there's an iPhone app and there's a windows app. So they've kind of got it everywhere. It's in dark mode now. So, which is super cool. So if you haven't, if you haven't tried that, give it a try. So how would you compare that to just using like the feature in one note of like a task list in one note? A lot better? Uh, I Well, for me, um, oh, I, I actually, I don't think it matters. It's, it's whatever no. works for you. Okay. Like I like the layout of, of, uh, of to do. Okay. And they I have love the, the layout of Wonderlist. iPhone so too. They do. Okay. They do. They have it for everything. So Got it. I just, it's, I, I need big boxes and, and I, I don't know about one note and it, I'm sure you can make them bigger and some of those other things, but the, you know, you've got in to do, you've got some ability to set repeats and important and by date and some shuffle, some things around. It's also right. not so much. It's not like a Trello board where there's so many things you can do. Mm-hmm. You just kind of get overwhelmed. You're like, oh my God, I need a PhD to run this thing. Yeah, no kidding. You know? Uh, so in fact, I just got a nine o'clock notice from um, to do to uh, to go take my medicine. So, you know, I'm an old guy now. So I've got to remind myself to to go take uh, to take medicine. Mike, one more thing, an old product that we haven't talked about ever on the show. And I want to kind of do a live demo. So I'm going to, I want to bring up, I'm going to share my screen here for a second. You'll get to see a little bit of behind the scenes here as we're doing some things. Let's get, let's share screen number two. Oh, that's handy. Okay. So maybe we won't do that. <laughs> that is, let's see if we can. I was wondering if that was just on my side that you were seeing that too. Yeah. No, that was flashing here as yeah. well. Let's go to, uh, let's just go to the screen. Let's see if this works. So there's an application. It's been around since 1903, and I think it became more popular in 1909. These are Windows Windows 10 versions. And um, it, and it's just called, it's called, and you're going to get the Tesseract here, but uh, it's just called um, Sandbox. And w- one of the interesting things about it is I tested it early when Microsoft was first rolling this thing out. I'm just going to go to, Windows and type in sandbox, and you you had you do have to you do have to install this thing on your computer, um, and so you have to enable some things. So look up if you you're going to look up Windows. Uh, hopefully, it won't lock me up completely. Can you still hear me? Uh, we lost you for a little bit there. Oh boy. So maybe. Okay, good. Yeah, I was going to say. You know, as soon as I started this thing up, I thought, yeah, I wonder if this is going to lock me up. You should be seeing, hopefully, the sandbox window opening. Are you seeing that? Yes. Okay, good. So we'll give it a second. So in that time that I was talking, uh, by the way, it's very CPU intensive, but in the time I was talking, it just started a VM for me of Windows 10. I didn't have to go in and provision it. I didn't have to go in and set up hard drive space for it. I didn't have to tell it how much RAM to use. It just created an instance of Windows 10. Are you seeing this Windows? This yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's blowing my mind. I had no idea this existed. This is like all new information to me. Yeah, yeah. So again, they've been working on this for a while. And this this had been something they they had used and and or they had started with. It used to be super intensive and they've really streamlined it down. And of course, like anything good that Microsoft does, uh, once they perfected it, they stopped talking about it. So um, w- one of the things, um, let's see if we have, um, oh, that's not good. It says it's not connected. Why is that? I mean, it 
looks like it's completely sandboxed, even the connection, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, they really. I was gonna limited? do a. I was gonna do a demo of showing. It's supposed to connect for some reason. It's not, and maybe the way. Let's um, let's close that down again, and then uh, maybe it's the way I've got this shown. So let me remove this again, and we'll stop sharing. And then let me bring it back up. I I'll bring it up back up on my on my big screen. Let's see if this. There we go. And then let me. Let me do search for it again. So just type in Windows Sandbox. Like I said, if you've never done this before, you'll need to do a few things to enable it on your Windows box. I'm going to disappear here for just a second, or I may just lock up. We'll see how that goes. And again, I just started it. You can't see it running now. I'm going to I'm going to bring it over to. But in that in the time that it's taken me, there it is. In the time it's taken me to kind of talk through this. It spins up a, a VM for you, which is super cool. Let's see if it connects this time. I don't know why it's not connecting. It should be earlier today. I tested it just to see, you know, like, can I bring this up in a live show? And it worked. One of the cool things about this now, because it won't connect, I can't do it, but it's comes with the old version of Microsoft Edge. And I, so this afternoon I opened up Edge and said, upgrade it to the new version of Edge. And it did just upgraded it right there. Boom. I was done. Hmm. The, the one thing about this doesn't stay, doesn't save state. So when you're in and you close it, you're done. Next time you open it, it's going to be this exact screen uh, that you see here. So it's what it's great for is though, if you needed to test something, if you wanted to run, like, you know, you run or wanted to run an application that you're like, uh, I don't know, or download an application from a site. You're like, oh, I don't know. Right. We all have antivirus and stuff like that, but this is another layer kind of protection here or you want to run a command line script a little shell script you want to make sure you have it right and you're not going to completely crash something right run right. it here in the sandbox make sure it works okay when you're in the powershell and stuff like that and you want to make sure you didn't mess it up probably a good way to test it yeah yeah and so it's it, it it's good as it's for as long as you leave it open as soon as you close it it's gone so it's completely sandboxed away from everything if you do something terrible here, you just close it and that all goes away. Runs off of the virtual machine, you know, technology, uh, VM, you know, the VM stuff that comes with Hyper Windows. Hyper-V, thank you. Yep. And um, uh, it's, it's enabled if you go in, I think you have to go, if you're going to add a component to Windows, you go in there and you'll see, I think it just says Microsoft Sandbox. Click it, it'll install some things and run it. It's Then it, it'll show up as an icon in your start menu. If you need to know how to do it, just search Windows Sandbox, and uh, you can you too close that out. Get some resource. Just take you know. In this case, it's going to take some CPU and some memory as it's running that box. Um, but a cool, another one of those cool uh, applications that we kind of forgot about. That I was like, eh, that might that might be an interesting little thing if you need a quick sandbox to try. It's available there on Windows Ten. Works works great. Listen, it's a million times faster than it used to be. So they've got they've gotten better. And even just, I mean, there are people who spin up a VM just for like a few hours on, you know, Unraid or something just to like test something out. I had yeah. no idea that existed. That's exactly, yeah. I've, I've done that on my Unraid box before. And uh, just to know that that exists, I'll be using that feature a lot. That's really cool. So, dude, super fast. I could yeah. today, this morning, as I was thinking about things to talk about, and I got reminded of this and I was like, oh yeah, I wonder if that thing is still up you know, POS because it was bad in the early days. And so I fired it up and boom, it was there. And I was like, wait a minute. Like, so I closed it, did it again, pop, popped up again. I was like, seriously, that's like 15 seconds. <laughs> like <laughs> that can't oh, be the same thing. This can't be not right. Well, so I did some digging, like I did some digging and it will not be, if you've just installed windows 10, it won't be there. Like I said, you have to go and install it and do some things to make it but super easy to get it on your box. It takes you, uh, depends on your PC, but it takes you five minutes to get it installed. Give it a try. Windows Sandbox, uh, if you want to give that a try, um, super cool. Mike, a couple of remi or reminders for folks on our way out. October 24th, meet up uh, in M-E-A-T. That's what you're calling it. That'll be the branding on it, stuff like that. There'll be a link. I put the link in the, uh, in the chat room. There'll also be a link in the show notes if you want to join us. We got a whole schedule of things. Uh, head over to Eventbrite. It's got the schedule in it. I'll be updating the Eventbrite calendar invite as well, just to kind of make sure we're all on the same page. 
If you have any questions or you can't find it, just email me, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. Or if you want to be one of the smoker cams that's live all day, and why wouldn't you want to be? I think that's going to be super cool. Uh, let me know, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv, and we'll get it done as well. Uh, just a small programming note. I'll be uh, out of the area here uh, the weekend of the 17th, and I'm actually going to be in Boston hanging out with Ed Sullivan. And we're going to do Ask the Podcast Coach. No show that Thursday. We're actually going to, I'll probably stream the Bit Defender um, interview or make it available on the live page that day so folks can watch it. We're going to send that down both channels, uh, both Cyber Frontiers. Christian did that with me. So that's coming up that weekend. But Cigar Authority, 930, no, 1130, 11, it's the right time, 11 Central noon Eastern on that weekend, October 17th, I get to hang out with the guys and talk podcasting on Cigar Authority, which is going to be super cool. So you're going to want to come out. Very cool audience, by the way. Um, not as cool as you guys listening right now, <laughs> but they're pretty cool. I've been hanging out with them the last couple of weeks on, on, uh, they, they do, you know, they do this live show on Saturdays at 11. I've been hanging out in the chat room. It's nice not to be the podcaster, but uh, going to be on that show. So head out to uh, let's see, where do we get information about this? Well, two, two guys, cigars, but I found him, uh, the cigar authority, find it on YouTube, follow him over there. 10, 17, it's going to be a ton of fun. So if you haven't, you don't, and by the way, you don't have to be into cigars to watch the show, come out and love to have you come out and join me. They've been, they've been promoting me up on the show for the last couple of weeks. So if you guys want to come out and join us in the chat room, that'll be awesome as well. Mike, I'll be thinking of you as I'm Smoking a couple cigars that weekend. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> a couple cigars. I may not come back alive. Anything else? Uh, <laughs> let's hope not. Uh, anything else you want to add, Mike, before we wrap it? No, I mean, when you let me talk ham radio, I pretty much get it all out of my system. So, uh, <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> well, we, we appreciate you guys out there both listening live and listening to the recorded version of this. And as we come up to the December 3rd, 10th anniversary show, we just want to say thanks for all that you do. I also want to thank our Patreon subscribers. If you go to the average guy.tv slash Patreon, you can be one of those as too. I'll be scheduling the next Patreon meetup probably early November at this point because of some of the things that are going on, but you can, there's still time to get in on that. So if you want to, if you want to be a Patreon supporter, head out to the average guy.tv slash Patreon, uh, $5 plans get you there as well. Man, I, I started drinking Sprite or seven up. <laughs> It's making me burp a ton. I hate that. <laughs> Do you want to join us in our Facebook group? Uh, TheAverageGuy.tv slash Facebook on Discord. We are TheAverageGuy.tv slash Discord. Of course, you can always reach me via email, Jim at TheAverageGuy.tv. Don't forget TheAverageGuy.tv, both web and media hosting powered by Maple Grove Partners. Get secure, reliable, high-speed hosting and some pretty great hosting from people that you know and trust. And, of course, that is Christian. Plans start as little as $10 a month, and he can do just about anything for you. So, Head out to maplegrovepartners.com, get signed up. Always appreciate when you guys come through and let them know that you're, you're Home Gadget Geeks listeners, as you're signing up for plans out there. He literally can set anything up. He's WordPress specialized and really good at podcasting, but he can do anything for you. So head out to maplegrovepartners.com, and uh, we'd love to have you be a partner over there um, as well. And then don't forget, I said I wouldn't say this, but I'm going to throw it in at the very end. The average guy.tv slash hello fresh. If you want to still join us <laughs> out of a show that you I can't get out of here without that. No, I had a bunch of, I had a bunch join during um, September. So thanks for doing that. Kyle just sent me a note today. He's like, okay, I'm going to do hello fresh. Send me the link. So if you'd like to do that, head over to the average guy.tv slash hello fresh and get signed up today. We are live every Thursday, 8 PM central nine Eastern. Oh, did I? So did I mention the, I didn't mention during the canvas segment about the contest. Did I? No. Okay. So let me let me mention it here real quick. So for the most engaged listeners, those who are going to do it have made it this far anyways. This is a little bonus content for the end. So, you know, Canva is our kind of affiliate uh, for the month of October. Um, I'd love to see you guys make really creative album art for Home Gadget Geeks during the month of October. So head over to Canva. You just use the free plan. You don't have to, if you want to sign up and pay for some things, you can, but but you can use the free plan. And what I need from you is album art for each of the shows. So like for this show, I'd love for you guys to come up with some creative album art. It needs to be 600 pixels by 600 pixels. That's that's just what I need. So go in there, make a custom 600 by 600. Just start doing it. Like I want to see how creative you can be. I can't use them all, but I may be able to use multiple ones. 
uh, in different ways. It'll definitely make the website. You saw that earlier. Uh, so if you're if uh, so if you're going to do that, get cracking on it now. As soon as you're hearing this, get moving on it. Love to see your art. Send me what you have for this show, Jim at the Average Guy TV, and uh, it'll go in the race. The considering to be the album art for this show. We'd love to have you do it. Use Canva, the Average Guy TV slash. Canva, C-A-N-V-A, to get in there as well. We are live every Thursday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, out here at theaverageguy.tv slash live. We'll do some post-show. With that, we'll say goodbye, everybody. We got a new cat today, Mike. Did you really? We did, yeah. Tim Tim picked up a cat. Yeah, he came home, and he's he's one of the, he's one of his own pet forever. So he's so we have a new cat now. It's exciting. Is he yeah. is getting along with the other cat? We haven't put him together yet, so gotcha. he's going to... He's it a, kid? a couple or... days, little little kitty. Oh, so okay. we have a super old man, super young baby boy. Yeah. So we're kind of hoping that we'll they'll get along from the very start. Pippin, our old cat, he's always wanted friends, but other cats don't want to be his friend. Well, maybe this cat, fresh I'm start. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. We we're hoping to get another year or two, maybe out of him before he. You know, he's tw- almost get he eighteen. <laughs> I'm hoping to get a year or two out of him before. Like, uh, well, he's eighteen. You know. Oh, wow, that's an old uh, cat. Yeah, I think 16, 17, 18, something like that. Jeez. So, yeah, it would be fun to see if those two can get along for Pippin's, Pippin's final years. So, yeah, be good. Yeah, so that's the big news. That's the big, no gadgets around that. Well, I've actually, so my brother-in-law is staying and the guest bed is right here and he's going to be trying to oh. hit the hay. I might cut it short just a little bit on post. Yeah, let's, let's, let's short it up. Studio lights, the poor guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, if you're listening live, thanks for coming out next week. Uh, Nathaniel Lindley is joining us. And so come out and... Oh, Nathaniel's here next week. Awesome. Yeah, he's coming out. We'll cool. be talking some hardware, some of the things they've learned from the pandemic. Yeah. So we'll see you guys live audience. We'll see you guys next week. Take care. Probably good that, Mike, we ended this early because my voice is getting...